in the school system, they don't want us to learn about money because they just want to pump out good employees that do what they're told. They don't want what we know out there. We've all been programmed. That's a fact of life. A lot of kids just in, in school kind of puzzled as to why yeah. they're there. Well, oftentimes business education today, and I see it all the time, kids come out of college, the best colleges, Wharton and Harvard and Stanford and some of the great business schools, and they'll come out and they won't have practical experience. There's too many case studies that aren't practical. What is school doing to your brain? If you look at school, it's opposite of what it takes to be successful in real life. We have a system where we take children away from their parents at least five days a week, all day, and we have control of their minds until they're about 17, 18. Don't make a mistake. Do as you're told. Take tests by yourself. Don't cooperate. Do it by yourself. Do it on your own. And there's only one right answer. No, there's tons of answers to a problem. We ask uh, kids that are 16 to 18 years old to make $100,000 debt decisions when they go off to university. What they're getting themselves into, they just assume, okay, I'm gonna pay four years of education at 25,000 a pop, and when I come out the other side, somehow I'll be able to pay it back. That's not how life works anymore. Money may not be the most important thing in the world, but it affects everything that is. It affects your lifestyle, it affects your health care. it affects your level of education, it affects the food you eat, it affects everything on a day-to-day -day basis. It may not be the most important thing, but it does affect everything that is important. One of the reasons we have such a horrible economy is because of what our top schools are pumping out. People who all they do is care about themselves and they create these CDSs, credit default swaps and derivatives that damage everybody. When you were in school, were you an A student or a C student? You know, were you the star of the class or the flunky of the class? And if you weren't the A student, then did that mean you couldn't be successful? Is that what it means to you? If you didn't go to a great school, you're never going to be successful? What if you drop out? You know, what if you drop out like Steve Jobs and uh, Bill Gates? That means you've had it. Jack Ma, who is the founder of a little company called Alibaba, he just recently said, if you're 35 and you're not rich and successful, you'll never be successful. Of course, Jack Ma is a school teacher former school teacher who struck it rich. But naturally, they have this idea that if you're not successful in school, you'll never be successful in life. And my contention has always been, it almost damages you in school. You know, school damaged my brain, and my father was the head of education for the state of Hawaii, PhD. And I hated school. I mean, I sat there and getting pounded all the time for being stupid. People come out of school paralyzed. I think the school system is criminal in that it kills a child's spirit of learning. You know, a child goes into school all excited about, yeah, I'm gonna learn and it's gonna be great. And then the teacher says, sit down and shut up. Shut up! You Dang. just be quiet. You just be quiet. Shut up! You hit the thief. You hit the thief. Don't talk. We don't care what you're interested in. They just teach you what they want to teach you instead of finding out what the child is interested in and teaching to that. I think kids come out of school scared to death of making a mistake. They come out paralyzed. They don't know what they want to do because their, their spirit and their creativity has been crushed inside of them. So you almost have to do a whole reprogramming once you get out of school so you can find out what it is that excites you, what it is that, that where your passion is. Because once you can discover what's most meaningful, then decisions and, and life become so much easier because there's more joy, there's more better communication with relationships. But they don't teach any of this in school. They just say, sit down, do as you're told, take the test by yourself and don't make a mistake. If you're not successful yet, you might be a late bloomer. This is especially for those with students still in school or you're struggling financially and you're over 35 or you're an old guy and you still haven't made it. Well, I hope you have a cash flow board game because the cash flow board game is the best teaching, much better than a boring old school teacher because cash flow involves your brain, your emotions because you hate losing. You have to physically do something and it inspires the spirit because you know, losing is a wonderful thing if it inspires you to win. I still play Monopoly. My rich dad just started playing Monopoly with me. The other thing he did, he then took me to his, you know, four greenhouses, Red Hotel. He took me 
to his greenhouses. I went, holy moly, that it was more than just a board game. So I'm not saying it has to be real estate, but if it's stocks, you know, I look at the guy, Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, the biggest hedge fund in the world. He started buying stocks at a young age, same as Warren Buffett. You want to do it when the brain is still malleable and pliable. So take the child, you know, go look at real estate. Donald Trump had to go collect rent. He had his boys collect rent. He said, you want adventures and psychosis? Go collect rent. You'll hear more BS than you ever had before. I remember when I had to go knock on a door to collect rent. It's terrifying. Get this adult and they're lying to you, telling these sob stories. I tell you, that's real education. So this stuff you learn in school, in my opinion, waste of time. The entire purpose of a good university is to give you a foundation to fail. Because we have two hemispheres of the brain, the left brain, which is about words and this world reality and, you know, the perception of this reality. We have the right brain, which is where you get creativity, inspiration and uh, connection. And then you've got this corpus colossum, which connects the two. First of all, we use a fraction of our brains. Why is that? Um, and the other thing is that what the system does is it turns out left brain prisoners. They run the system and it does it by putting information through schools and colleges and universities into the left brain, which it then says at a uh, time of an exam, give me all that back. And if you tell me what I've told you well enough to believe, then you'll uh, pass the exam and you'll be very successful. We have too many entrepreneurs. We have too many successful people. How is it possible that school is making kids less intelligent? <laughs> Go to high school, get a diploma. Go to a good college, find a stable job. And if you don't do that, you won't be successful. And if that was true, how am I even standing here today? How did I, a straight C student, start a technology company at the age of 16? Here's what I believe. Parents, teachers, educators, you have the power to influence and inspire youth. And if there's one message that I want parents, kids, and all of you to take away from what I've said here today, that you can stray away from this conventional, limited, and narrow path that education sets us upon. You can diverge and create your own future. No one has ever changed the world by doing what the world has told them to do. I hated, I hated school. I really hated school. I really, well, I hated school, generally, right? Because it was this instruction following thing. Ego barrier is the worst thing. And if we were raised differently, just imagine in the schools that all along that people will always say, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has weaknesses. The key is really to understand what your mistakes and weaknesses are so that you can learn from them. I think punishment is a terrible concept. Punishment means that you made a mistake and you're being punished. I think instead of punishment, every time somebody makes a mistake, you should say the only thing that you need to do to get out of your punishment is first think, what kind of mistake was that? So if I'm in a situation that's like that again, how would I do deal with it differently not to make that mistake? So that learning should come from the mistake, not punishment. Every little flower of curiosity, said Einstein, is crushed by society itself. It's an extremely uh, corrupt system we have at this point. There's, we have an education bubble. In the US, we have a trillion dollars of student debt. The first approximation, this has gone to pay for a trillion dollars worth of lies about the value of the education people have received. And um, it's not at all obvious yet, though, what's going to replace this or how it's going to change. We are told that uh, it's the only way to salvation. You must get a diploma be saved. If you do not get a diploma, then you will go to hell. The message that I have is that uh, you have to work out your salvation on your own. You have to save yourself. I believe that is the truth, but it's a somewhat uncomfortable one. Every time the schools do something with your kids that you don't agree with, keep them at home. Simple as that. And do it now. 
because the systems that produce teachers have become pathological completely. They're indoctrination camps and nothing else. The thing is, they know they lost on the scientific front. They've lost. Teachers need real information right now about what's happening to their kids. The high stakes is today because you can do something about it. The real safety of our nation is preparing this next generation.